Hi guys, I'm here with a friend of mine, somebody I've known for a while. Uh, Howdy. You may spot him as Dr. Aaron Boster. He He's a pretty popular neurologist. What are you, 40,000 subscribers on YouTube? Oh, I don't know about all that, but I'm really uh, you'll be here with you. <laughs> you know what, you're pretty darn close. So that, as somebody with less than that on their channel, I'm impressed. But what I wanted to talk to you about, thank you for the beer. My was, pleasure. Cheers. Happy action. Thank you, happy actions, yeah. I wanted to talk to you. I'm an old fart, frankly, and you are, you're you're younger than me, but you're the wrong side of 40, should we say? Yep. If you're newly diagnosed, let's just say you're 25, okay? You haven't had much contact with the healthcare system. Yep. Now you're seeing doctors, nurses, uh, imagine you're, you're in a hospital the whole time, and, I, and A, the, your life's been turned on its head. B, many people in my experience think that you and other people like you can walk on water, so... I think it's harmful for people's treatment, all kidding aside, that you need to have a good relationship with your medic. And that's about, you know, I can give you my ideas, but again, I'm old and bullshit, and I wanted to hear from you. What makes you well, so you expect said, and want to engage with a younger patient? So, so it's a really important point. Um, one of the reasons it's a really important point is because I, as an MS neurologist, help people by request. So I don't make you do anything i ask you to do things and it's been my experience that if you don't you request me i the request patient. you as the patient to please for example not smoke as an example mm -hmm. so if you don't understand why that's important you won't do it mm -hmm. conversely if i can help you understand why you'll kind of do my job for me now with that stated it is critically important that we have outstanding communication and there's a potential barrier, as you point out, someone who's new to healthcare or scared of the doctor. And, and really what I tell people is this, you are a you expert. You know more about you than any other human on earth. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. And you have insights into your body that I couldn't possibly have. Well, my life, all these other things that influence Correct. how I you feel and act and yeah. I read books you didn't read. That does not make me smarter than you. It does not make me better than you. It means I read books you didn't read. Now, you bring your expert knowledge of you. I bring my books I read, and then together we have a common goal. Now, one of the ways that I like to start that process is when I meet a family, I give them some homework assignments. The first homework assignment, the most important homework assignment, is to list three to five long-term life goals. And I tell them, I can tell you how to beat up on MS. I can't tell you why. You tell me why. Aaron, can I, can I turn this around? Because sure. there's people out there, okay, whether you think it or not, you're not the ordinary MS neurologist. I'm, for a variety of reasons that we can talk to your therapist about, but it many people have a different experience than the doctor. I suspect if people, patients were to experience your approach, it would probably be a lot easier. But okay, okay, so in the UK, say, there can often be social or perceived social differences and things like this. Okay. And how does a patient bridge that gap between you've read tons of books, which I haven't, but I want you to take me seriously. A point well taken. So, so it is incumbent upon the patient to recognize the following. The doctor patient relationship is intimate. Whether you want it to be intimate or not, it is. It's not a sexually intimate thing. It's an emotionally intimate thing where we're gaming out how to try to live your best life despite having this condition. Having your mess up, the amount of times I've had to take off at least half my clothes, right. it's just part of the ordinary. And sometimes you know, even somebody with the comes at you with a hammer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even when they ask me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I think I think what you want to do is you want to first recognize that this person is going to be a help a, a, a member of my team as I try to live my best life. And we need to, we re recognize that. I think it's worthwhile to try to tell your doctor. I want you to know a little bit about me. Can I can I spend two minutes and tell you about me? I I, I want you to know who you're treating. And, and I would make a point of trying to update the doctor about you in a small way every time you see them. Okay, you, so so essentially putting something into the relationship, as opposed to just going, doctor, tell me what's wrong, doctor, tell me what to do. It's like, doctor, see, we are going to be together for a yeah. while now. Whether or not we wanted to, I've met you and now you and I are together. You and know. one of the ways that you can convey that if the, the doctor's not serving it up for you, come into the room with a sheet of paper. On the sheet of paper, write down things that are important to you, your goals. You need to find someone that's going to 
be your team member. Mm. And and I'm not for everyone. No, no, no clinician is. But but if you said, look, I, I wrote down some goals. So as we work together, doctor, I want to finish my master's degree. That's important to me. I want to have another child and, and I want to climb Monte Picchu. These are things that I want. So will you help me do that? Mm. And I think if you approach it from that manner, you're, you're not being adversarial, you're, you're asking them for help appropriately, but you're also telling them, I have an expectation. I expect to walk up a mountain. So can you please help me walk up a mountain? So tell me about MS Prodrome. I've been hearing about this in Extremes, Aaron, and yep. Prodrome sounds like the professional drone, but yeah, I don't was, know, yeah. So, so the, the medical term Prodrome means signs and symptoms that you experience before the onset of a diagnosed illness. So so there's strange things going on. Correct. That nobody, me or the doctors included, think we Correct. know what it is. Correct. Now there are uh, many, many conditions that have very well described prodromes. For example, in neurodegenerative conditions, there is a prodrome to Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes people will lose their smell. Mm -hmm. And that's a prodrome. And that's where you yes. got COVID, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so there's a prodrome, for example, to Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. Um, and in other... Um, so it's in, telling you the doctor, you might want to start looking in this direction. Correct. Right. In, in the, the field of rheumatology, who are ahead of us by about 15 years, they've identified preclinical prodromes for rheumatoid arthritis and for lupus. Mm -hmm. And what that allows them to do is identify the disease preclinically. And so what happens? You don't replace joints anymore because you get a yeah. hold of them ahead of time. So it turns out that MS this is where you can give the better drug sooner, isn't it? Right. Exactly. That's where we're going. So, yeah. so, 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 <laughs> like, so if you if, mad. if you look at claims data, so in the United States you mm -hmm. can look at um, utilization of healthcare, yeah. and you look at the first symptom onset. So someone had, God forbid, optic neuritis, and then you look back. What you see is scary. The five years leading up to the optic neuritis, they tapped healthcare sometimes five times more than the general population. They're, so this should be the clue, correct. but it's not. Well, the, the, the issue, so, so these people are accessing uh, um, GU, GI, and psych concerns. They're going to the hospital more often, they're going to the clinic more often, and they're using, they're, they're purchasing medicines like 78% more than the general population. The thing that drives me nuts is you can only figure it out retrospectively. Right, so, so if you could do are, it. Are, are we in the, a bit like Parkinson's where you lose your sense of smell, are we getting to the that sure looks like it's probably going to go down the MS route. So we're not there yet, but that's where the discussions are. So I'll give you an example. A first degree relative of someone with MS has a statistically slight higher risk of MS. So that might be, um, and I don't mean this to sound bad, but a, a, an enriched population to study or to monitor. So you take the first degree relative of someone with MS and maybe you do neurofilm at light chain to see if it's elevated or 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 maybe their non-specific symptoms are taken a bit more seriously and lead to an MRI. Another example is in the radiologically isolated syndrome where someone has never had a clinical manifestation of MS but the brain MRI looks a whole heck of a lot like There's they have MS. many doctors in the UK now they're starting to say CIS we will treat as MS from the outset. You know there's some, some that don't but there's but many that yeah. They should and in uh, so I might be a little bit atypical. I treat RIS because I'll tell them. Right. So so if you have radiological, radiological okay, yeah. So if you have an MRI that looks like MS but you don't have MS yet, I will offer you treatment because if I'm wrong, I'll apologize. But if I'm right, I helped you. Mm. What this is doing is. It's Are you going to do anybody if, if a customer, a customer, a patient, started taking the medication? Let's say some of that alkalizumab, but it wasn't. So, are they going to be harmed in any way, or is it a case to just stop the medication and let it wear off? That's the discussion. So what I tell them is, if I'm wrong, I subject you to stigma. I, I, I make it hard to get insurance in the United States. Mm. I, I, you have the side effects of the drug, and it wasn't necessary. Yeah. But if I'm right, I preserved brain volume, and I kept you from having brain and spinal cord damage. And in my heart, I don't know what else this is, and I'm going to treat it like what I think it is. This is where you use natalizumab, isn't it? Because natalizumab is very effective, but far more reversible. I mean, so this, uh, so this, all, Schmarrs, this, the all be, this, this, yes, this all becomes very relevant as you, as you select those medicines in these, in this right. population so early. So what you might be able to do in the future would be to identify preclinical MS. And we know that if you treat MS earlier, people fare better. We know that if you use highly effective drugs earlier, people do better. So if you could back it up preclinical, they may not manifest multiple sclerosis, literally. Mm. And so it's a very, very exciting... So you've sat on it enough with treatment before it's even had a chance to get going. You sort of walked up and it's like a bounce on a nightclub going, 
you look like trouble. Yeah, so don't you could go. Correct. Yeah, you know, or I'm going to put you in a headlock and call the police, and you're like, what, 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 what? You're like, so, shut up. You're not correct. coming in. That's exactly right. And so, so this concept of prodrome, it's 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 a relatively new concept, and it really challenges dogma. So if you look at the diagnostic criteria for MS, it is written. McDonald's. Yes, yeah. it is written from up on high. Ian, Ian McDonald wrote, and it's so written. So you have to have an attack and then a second attack, or an attack in new spots. But you have to have a clinical attack. And I remember when I was coming up through the ranks, and I would ask my mentors, if if the person presents with a seizure, is that an attack? No. And I said, why? And they said, so easy because. for doctors just to dismiss things. And yeah. you're, when you're at the other end, it's like. So, so why did they have a seizure? Well, mm. well, back when I asked that question, we didn't have cortical imaging. Yeah. And so, so I, I really think it's time for us to get out of our own heads and to look at the human being and, and, and try to move the needle earlier. So we, we could start to screen people with RIS and first degree relatives of people with MS with neurofilament light. We might even... My daughter's going to was gonna be thrilled. Well, but it's a blood test. I know, and, I know. I'm you know, kidding, and, yeah. and, and, and I think... That has the potential to have a, a massive impact, and so I, I'm I'm delighted that we're talking about prodrome now because I we we as clinicians need to open our minds to thinking earlier and earlier and earlier. So I might know your answer now. What's your big takeaway from Hectrums this year? You know, if you were going to say the one thing that I Aaron turned up wasn't really paying attention to, but it kind of hit me between the eyes, and I thought, wow, you know, is so, there one thing? So there's. I think there may be three things. Three things. Yeah, doctors never, will never tell you one. Sorry. So, three, so, that's so the, the, the big... You know what? It's your, it's your show. Three. No. <laughs> okay. So I wanted, Sorry, I, people. It's three. I wanted one, but you get... So, no. so the first thing is quite literally seeing friends. Like, quite literally. So you and I, I, I consider you a friend. We have never met in person. No, but you give me... You talked me into starting a YouTube channel. Well, but I but but when I planned to come to Ectrums, I was excited, and I am excited to see you. And similarly, well, I'm more excited now. You both bear it. Well, there you That's go. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So, so similarly, I mean, I have friends from around the world that are MS treaters that I only see at these congresses, and yeah. we haven't seen each other in three years. And so, being in the community of MS treaters is is very special to me. Um, and so that's that's one thing that I think is a really, okay, so, really big deal. Yeah, but that's I'm going to help. It's lovely, but it ain't helping patients. Correct. No, yeah. but but, but I'm speaking, <laughs> I know, I know. So Please. so as far as what's been presented. So the, the, the two other answers. There's a theme which is permeating through the, the, the entire Congress about recognizing earlier treatment mm -hmm. um, in, in, in very different forms. And, and I really, really like that. Um, th this Ectrums meeting is much more clinically relevant to me as an MS doc than I've seen Ectrums in the past. Sometimes Ectrums is really highfalutin science, which is important. But this to me is 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 much more clinical oriented, which I love, and I, I see a theme of earlier treatment. Now, the third answer, and if I'm being honest, is I don't know yet, because the way that I do ectrums is when I go home, I bring all the materials, and then I'm going to do a lot of studying, and I'm going to go through the abstracts and posters. So you're so, a nerd, aren't you? I am. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, fine. You know, yeah. So, studying. Yeah. So so <laughs> you know, I used to, to honestly, I used to try to do that beforehand or during. Right. Okay. But now I I, I can take all the materials home, and, and then I'll go through, and it takes a couple weeks for me to emerge, and then I'll be able to answer that question with authority. So, okay. So right now, this is the chrysalis. Yes. And you're going to have to go and turn into the Aaron Boss of Butterfly version and figure in a few out. Weeks. Yeah, okay. that's exactly. So what I'll be doing when I go home is I'll be spending evenings kind of going through the informations and reading yeah. the abstracts and roll. Yeah, figuring yeah. stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, th this is this truly is the Olympics of MS for me. I mean, this is yeah. where I I, I re-energize. This is where we learn ideas. This is where um, you know I I get motivated to go back into my clinic and whoop ass. And so it's really exciting to you know to get to do that. Brilliant. Aaron, thank you for the beer. Lovely to meet you. It's a pleasure. Face to face and catch up. It's a pleasure. And thank you, Dom. Likewise. I lived health. We really appreciate the effort you've made. It's it's um it's a collaborative effort. I really love the collaboration. I really, really do. Yeah, um, yeah, me you know, too. and and together, uh, this community is fantastic. Um, really. And it's really it's not just and it enriches me. I mean it's it, it's I um I'm delighted that I get to do this with you. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. All right, brilliant. Lived Health will be bringing you on-the-day highlights from Europe's biggest annual MS conference, Ectrims 2022. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on the latest updates in MS treatment from across the globe.